my grandfather had an old saying. Quit starting off your videos with long, irrelevant jokes. Everyone hates it. Just get to the point, you stupid content monkey. I was never quite sure what Gramps meant by all that, but anyways, let's talk about the mail. So you ever wonder what the post office does when it's hard to read the address on some mail? Well, me neither, but we have to make like seven videos a month, so we're gonna talk about it anyways. In the United States, when you send USPS mail to someone, like to reorder your dentures or something, it'll get processed by a big giant machine called an Automated Mail Processing Machine, or UMPM, which scans the address on the front of it and then tries to figure out what it says. When the first high-speed optical character reading mail sorter was rolled out in 1965, it essentially sucked in the way that most old computers sucked, but the modern AI systems are really good in the way that new AI is smart enough to write HAI scripts by itself without making a single mistletoe. The newest USPS machines typically can read 98% of handwritten addresses and 99.5% of machine-written ones. If the machine manages to read your handwriting and match it to the massive database of addresses the government keeps on hand in case they ever decide to take your guns away, your letter will go on its merry way to your grandmother, who will no doubt throw it in the fire because of how you betrayed her all those years ago. But what if your handwriting sucks even worse than a thing that sucks a lot? Well, then the machine takes a picture of your chicken scratch and sends it to the place that dreams are made of. The Remote Encoding Center in Salt Lake City, Utah, where a team of 1,700 valiant government workers spend all day staring at bad handwriting and trying to figure out what it says. Basically, it's like being a middle school English teacher, except with a lot less bad poetry about parents getting divorced. The Remote Encoding Center processes about 5 million pieces of mail on an average day, although that balloons up to 11 million in December, apparently because of some child-obsessed elf or something. A new employee can typically process about 750 addresses an hour, while more experienced ones closer to 1,600 an hour, although that's nothing compared to the 9 million a minute Sonic the Hedgehog could do if he worked at the REC like in this fanfiction I wrote. REC readers are trained by a 55-hour test that the workers describe as infuriatingly difficult to complete, which coincidentally is the same thing people said about my Sonic the Hedgehog fanfiction. At their height in the late 90s, there were 55 remote encoding centers across the country processing about 10% of mail, which translated to about 19 billion images a year. Enough images that if you were to print them out and stack them, you would have a really tall stack. But now that image processing machines have gotten smarter and will soon rule us all, they typically only have to send about 1.5% of mail to the REC, a mere 2.4 billion images a year which is processed in the only remaining center in Salt Lake City. But what if your handwriting sucks so bad that professional bad handwriting readers can't decipher it? Well, then it goes to a dead mail center, which sounds like a name for Jeffrey Dahmer's house, but is actually a building formerly known as the Mail Recovery Center in Atlanta, Georgia. Once mail arrives at the MRC, they do the same thing as my 15-year-old arch nemesis, Lincoln Markham. Find out what's inside. Once they scan the item, it gets dealt with according to this chart. Credit cards are held for a week, then shredded, international passports are immediately sent to the relevant country's consulate, and license plates are held for a week, then sent to the state DMV. Generally, though, if the item appears to be something worth less than $25, like for example this reasonably priced half as interesting t-shirt available now at store.nebula.app, they toss it in the trash, although there is an exception for items that appear to have clear sentimental value, like for example this reasonably priced half as interesting t-shirt available now at store.nebula.app. If the contents appear to be worth more than $25, though, the folks at the MRC will open it up and search for clues as to where it was intended to go or where it was sent from. If they do an Alicia Silverstone and come up clueless, the item gets held for 60 days to see if a claim is made. And if it isn't, it gets auctioned off by the government through a partner called GovDeals.com where anyone can bid on it. Anyone in the market for a Leatherman multi-tool set? A tire bike? How about 95 pairs of electrical insulating gloves? All of this is to say, next time you need to send something, try to write legibly, or else the 95 pairs of insulating gloves you were sending to your grandmother are going to end up in my pocket at a reduced auction price. So you know how everyone loves our jokes? We always get comments saying they're as good as Elon Musk's SNL monologue, the Garbage Pail Kids movie, or season 4 of Community. Well, to demonstrate how we attain perfection, we've taken all the jokes that we didn't include in the final version of this video, the ones that are too lame, too long, or too demonetizable, compiled them into a video, and put that exclusively on Nebula. 
So you Nebula subscribers can go watch that now, but you non-Nebula subscribers get this. So you've got Nebula, you know, exclusive companion videos, ad-free and early access to normal videos, big budget Nebula originals, and more from all your favorite educational creators. Then you've got Curiosity Stream, an endless catalog of non-fiction shows and documentaries like Winnebago Man, about the profanity-strewn RV salesman who featured in one of the internet's earliest viral videos and how that still affects him decades on. So Nebula and Curiosity Stream together, with an enormous amount of video content that you'll actually watch, all this will cost you, if you sign up at curiositystream.com slash HAI, is $1.23 a month with the current sale. Plus, signing up there will help support all these independent creators, so head to curiositystream.com slash HAI now.